Why DevRel Matters to You with Mary Thingball. Bear with me while I get my screen shared here. Hope everyone's doing well on this Tuesday. Seems like this week is going, going by too fast already, but. All righty. Cool. Well, hopefully you are seeing a picture of a lot of pictures, uh, yep. a lot of different people on the screen in front of you. Awesome. So this is a snapshot of my community. Um, I am a complete and total people person for anyone who knows me. I love connecting people both personally and professionally. And these people that you see on the screen are all part of the greater tech community in one way or another. But have you ever known without a shadow of a doubt that you belong, you truly belong as a part of a community and that these are your people. And yet somehow for one reason or another, you don't feel completely accepted by them because they don't truly understand what it is that you actually do. Welcome to developer relations. So how many of you are familiar with this term? I know there's a chat. Uh, if you wanna throw answers in there, you can. Um, and I'm also curious how many of you are familiar with the debates about developer relations that have been happening on Twitter over the last six months or so. Um, I'm sure even if you aren't familiar with those debates, you're probably familiar with or you follow someone who has recently said, hey, I'm joining Microsoft as a cloud developer advocate or I'm joining Google as a cloud developer advocate, right? It's, it's a term that has, has exploded in these last, um, last few months, last few years. But I'll show you a little bit about what's been going on uh, with the drama that I mentioned and the debates that I mentioned and and kind of help you understand a little bit about this confusion around developer relations and how it's being explained by people who, mind you, aren't in developer relations. Um, these next few quotes that I'll show you are real quotes from Twitter and Reddit, but I've removed the names and changed a word or two to protect the innocent. So here's the first quote. This says, developer relations involves being a social media influencer on behalf of big corporations without being honest about that fact. Unfollowing DevRel folks here has been a good move. This next quote says, there should be no full-time DevRels. They should all rotate, working on real code and real products half the time, especially those in dire need of what they're preaching. And this last one's my favorite. It says, am I the only one to whom developer advocate sounds like a career path that's a bit like dermatologist in the sense that it's people who went to medical school but didn't quite cut it as real doctors? And these quotes and so many others that I could have chosen from are just another example of people not understanding what developer relations is and the value that we provide to our company, sure, but more importantly, the value that we bring to you, our technical community that we so desperately want to connect with. Not so that we can sell you on our product, mind you, but so that we can empower you to do your jobs better. And I love the fact that I get to talk to you about this today because the hard thing about developer relations is we're so often talking to developers, talking to ops people, talking to our technical audience about things that our product does or ways that we can help you. But we often don't talk about what it is that we're doing and why we're trying to help you and why we care about that so much. And what most people wind up not understanding is that DevRel isn't just about coding. It's not just about speaking. It's not just people standing on a stage or, or giving a webinar. It's not sales, it's not really even marketing, though it has similarities to all of those things at times. It's not engineering, it's not product, it's not anything that fits into a particular hole that we're used to, right? And Roach says this on Twitter, he's a, a developer advocate over at Slack. He says, developer relations involves a lot more than writing code. DevRel is building relationships and fostering trust, collecting and relaying feedback to other teams, helping people work through challenges, inspiring people to build, building tools to empower, and mentorship. And Greg Bullmash puts it this way. He says, developers are like Microsoft or Amazon. What they do is well known. Advocates, evangelists, and community managers are like a Series B startup, well regarded in their niche, but harder for people outside it to understand. And that's why I'm here today. And that's why Brian asked me to talk. And I'm here to help you understand the essence of developer relations, the who, what, where, when, why, and how of this largely misunderstood industry. And my goal is to not only answer any questions that you have about developer relations, but to help you understand why developer relations professionals are so passionate about you 
and how we apply that passion toward empowering you. But first, for those of you who don't know me, you may be asking, who am I? Why am I here today presenting on this topic? Um, I don't have a developer background. I have a journalism background. But I entered the journalism world right as most newspapers in the US were laying off their writing staff, which, as you might tell, is not ideal. So like a lot of tech companies, I pivoted. And I'm now using my feature writing and storytelling abilities to show the business value of building these technical communities of folks just like you. Now, I've personally worked with various developer communities for more than 10 years now, even if I don't have, or even though I don't have that developer background, I have the technical background. So I've been uh, building websites and things since I was in high school. Um, for those of you who remember the Yahoo plug and play websites, I got tired of being told that those were my only choices and decided to learn HTML myself so I could build a website that I actually wanted to build. But I wound up working at companies like O'Reilly Media, Chef Software, SparkPost, and some of you on this webinar today probably know me because of the time that I've spent at meetups or conferences or events or talking to you on Twitter when I was working with those companies. But my favorite thing about working with technical communities, no matter what company I've been a part of, has always been finding the best solutions for the problems that you're facing. And as I worked with all these various technical communities, I kept finding myself going back to my journalism training, recognizing patterns, drawing conclusions, telling stories about how these communities are not only beneficial for technical folks like you who are trying to understand new concepts or new products, but they're also beneficial for the companies that are taking the time to invest in them. And it started to become really clear to me that while some companies could absolutely succeed without a community behind them, the best companies, the most successful, the ones whose communities were loyal and consistently praising them without any type of bribery or any type of official ambassador program or anything else, these companies were the ones who took the time to invest in the technical communities around them and were largely successful because of that time spent investing in those communities. And I also started to realize that a lot of companies didn't understand what the true value of these communities or the true value of developer relations was. And for the most part, at companies where de developer relations or DevRel teams were present, they were underestimated, underutilized, and overworked. And we usually lacked the resources to know how to make things better on our own. So in 2017, I left the corporate world and started out on my own. I founded a company called Persea Consulting, and my mission has been this. I want to be creating resources about developer relations and community management educating and providing professional development opportunities for those who are practicing in this field, for those developer relations professionals, developer advocates, community managers, as well as for their managers and their stakeholders who are trying to understand what all of those terms mean and how to best set them up for success within the business. Now, my hope has been that by providing resources and working with these companies one-on-one, -on -one, the industry slowly starts to understand the business value of developer relations and the advantage that connecting with a technical community like yourselves can give them in this day and age. But more importantly, how they can connect with that audience to better understand and better serve their needs. So I do a handful of things to fulfill that mission. I have a, a weekly newsletter called DevRel Weekly. Um, I have a podcast that I run called Community Pulse. I have a book that came out last year, The Business Value of Developer Relations. And a lot of what I'm talking about today is covered in the book as well. Um, but the, the other part of that is this who, what, where, when, why, how that I referenced earlier, um, that I'm working to help make sure that you, the technical audience, understands the true value that we bring to you. Because I think if you're, you, as our technical audience, don't understand that value, then we're missing a big piece of it as professionals. And before I move into answering that question, these screenshots that I'm putting up on the screen right now um, are all tweets and comments and things from Dev.2, as well as Twitter, from folks who work in the industry. Um, I had a lot of help from folks on Twitter and Dev.2 and people answering my question about what do you want people to know about DevRel? What do you love about DevRel? What do you love about your job? And I'll be quoting from a few of these throughout the presentation today. Um, but there's also a thread linked in my Twitter account um, for a presentation very similar to this um, that I gave at Glucon a couple months ago. And so if you want to go there for more resources, more information, this Twitter thread is linked there as well. So let's jump in. 
Um, the first question I want to answer today is what? And I'm starting here because I firmly believe in making sure that everyone's on the same page with terminology before we dive into an important conversation. So before we even get to developer relations, let's define community. Community is a group of people who not only share common principles, but also develop and share practices that help individuals in the group thrive. And how we define who falls into this realm of community at a particular company depends on the company's goals and intentions. But for our purposes today and the definition that I normally use, community includes a company's employees, anyone who touches the code base, anyone who might benefit from the code base. Um, as well as current customers and prospects and anyone who could in the future be interested in using the product, which is a fairly broad group of people. So how does this all fit into developer relations? First of all, developer relations isn't just another name for developer advocates, which is an important distinction to make. Developer relations is the umbrella term for the team whose primary responsibility is building a community both online and offline. And this includes developer advocacy, developer experience, events sometimes, community management, content, a whole lot of other things too. It can even go so far as to include roles like documentation and training at companies like Twilio. And in other words, it's a big umbrella, right? It covers a lot. And you might feel like some of the things that I'm talking about here today are reflected in your own roles as well. The tasks that developer relations professionals are responsible for aren't limited to the DevRel team. They can often reach into a variety of teams around the company, which is part of the reason why you'll see DevRel teams popping up in marketing or product or engineering. So I'm gonna take a quick detour into where for a moment from what, because for those of you who have been in tech for a while, particularly open source tech, this might all be sounding very familiar to you. So where did this term come from? You'll hear some folks say that it's brand new. Others will say that it's been around for decades. And in some ways they're both right. The term developer relations itself is relatively new. The earliest searches for it that I can find are like 2012. But developer evangelists first popped up at Apple in the 80s, thanks to Mike Murray and Guy Kawasaki, and they had a consultant, Terry Lanier, who helped coin that term as well, and others on the Macintosh team there. However, open source or technical community management has been around for decades since open source began in the 1950s and 60s and broader community management in the sense of community organization and forming groups of like-minded people has been around for centuries. We've constantly been gathering around uh, common hobbies or common geographic areas and things like that. And I believe that developer relations at its core is community management for a technical audience, which of course has some nuance to it and a few more technical roles. But at the end of the day, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're at best trying to improve it. In other words, it's nothing new. It's just new terminology. Language is fluid. And just like data scientist is the new trending name for statistician, developer relations is the new trending name for technical community management. Which leads us back to the what. What is developer relations? At its foundation, the purpose of developer relations is to build relationships with and enable our technical communities. DevRel professionals act as a liaison between our company and the technical audience typically the end users of the product, you all, right? And while most professionals have the best interest of the business at the front of their minds, driving their day-to-day -day decisions, DevRel professionals have the best interest of the community as their driving factor. And we of course care about the success of the business as well, it is what pays our bills, but we understand that if the community is happy and successful as a result of using the product, the business is far more likely to succeed as well. I like this mantra to explain the symbiotic relationship between those two things. So to the community, I represent the company. To the company, I represent the community. And I must have both of their interests in mind at all times. Think of us like the connective tissue between the company and the community, as well as the connective tissue at our companies, connecting product and marketing, sales and engineering, customer support and product and more, all for the sole purpose, again, of serving you, our technical communities. So if developer relations is the name for the industry or the team of people at a company, who makes up this team? Well, we've got developer advocates, we've got community managers, we've got technical evangelists, or as I prefer to call them, technical ambassadors. You might also find developer experience manager in here, as well as events manager, project manager, sometimes even a full-time engineer or two. So what are all of these roles? Here's your TLDR. So 
Developer advocate is someone who likely has some sort of coding experience, whether that's an official CS degree, code school experience, or they've been some sort of developer in a past life. They're often building sample applications, they're live coding, they're giving demos, and they're engaging with the community on a technical level. A technical community manager, on the other hand, which was the background that I had, uh, may not have this coding background, though we absolutely could, but they will definitely be tech savvy. We need to be able to carry on conversations that take a fairly deep dive into where the product fits within the broader technical market, as well as answer questions about the technical aspects of the product. Next up, technical ambassadors or developer evangelists. There's been a lot of debate about this. This is one of the original terms for developer relations professionals, but there's been a lot of issue with the religious connotations um, as well as you know, partly in the US, but even more so in Europe. Um, and just misunderstanding about what it is. Um, I've worked with a couple of folks and there's some of us that are, are certain to call this more of a technical ambassador these days, but these are the folks who excel at promoting the importance of the particular product within the larger technology industry. And all of these roles play a part in accomplishing a singular goal, enabling our technical audience, developers and ops folks, you who use our product to be the best that you can be at your jobs. And when we're led by an experienced manager who believes in the business value of developer relations and has the ability to create a strategy that sets the team and the company up for success in the eyes of the community, there's no end to the value that we can provide. So that's most of the popular titles that you've likely heard throughout the industry lately. Um, but there is one more thing I wanna clear up because I know if I don't, I'll probably get questions about it later. So, WTF is developer avocado. And why are there personified avocados on this screen? One of which kind of looks like me. Why are they on the cover of my book? What does the little emoji mean? Why is it taken over Twitter? So this all started a little over three years ago when I was working with the developer relations team at SparkPost. One of our project managers had a hard time saying developer advocate when she got to talking quickly and instead it often came out as developer avocado. And given how much we all on the team loved avocados, that's the team of three on the screen that you see there, we took on the mantle without much prompting and soon came up with an analogy for it that helped our coworkers understand our jobs. You see, DevRel is often referred to as the fatty part of the business, given that we usually ask for a fairly large budget for our community endeavors and speaking engagements, conference, open source sponsorships, things like that. But we believe that used in the right ways at the right times with the right combination of items, we can contribute to the health of the company as well as the overall community of tech professionals. Therefore, DevRel is officially the good kind of fat. So moving on, some of you may be wondering, can't engineering and product collect their own feedback? Why do I have to talk to an intermediary group that I don't really understand in order to get information back to the engineers on the product? When is DevRel actually necessary? So let me play devil's advocate for a second here, because one of the quotes that I said at the beginning referenced this too, right? Like, why do we need DevRel? We just need engineers who actually listen to the community. And there's a somewhat valid question if you aren't familiar with the value that DevRel actually brings to the table. So why do we need a DevRel team to get this feedback back to the rest of the team and improve the developer experience? Couldn't it be done with a combination of product or marketing surveys, engineering support, a technical writer hired to write some blog posts and improve the documentation? It's just, it's just a mindset, right? Which leads me back to the mantra from the beginning of this talk. What sets DevRel apart and makes us uniquely able to fulfill this relationship building and listening and understanding that goes hand in hand with building a community of loyal customers is that our primary focus and our goals are first and foremost based around the community. It's not just a mindset. It's not just a set of skills. It's that continuum of skills and approaches that are impactful, maybe even more so than the term itself. And the focus and attention that we give this gives us the opportunity to build up trust among our community members. When you all know that we're asking you for feedback so we can advocate for your needs internally, you're far more likely to be honest with us. Authenticity breeds authenticity. And while it's entirely possible for product and marketing professionals to have this viewpoint as well, their priorities tend to be split between feature releases and lead generation and a lot of other things that are on their plate, which means the developer relations team is the only one that has your best interests at heart 100% of the time. So 
Now that you have a basic handle on what DevRel is and some of the terms it includes, as well as when it's necessary for tech companies, let's move on to who. And this next slide is for all my Battlestar Galactica fans, because we are among you. There are many of us probably here in this webinar right now. Uh, we take part in discussions in your community chat rooms. We watch the conversations happening on Stack Overflow, on Reddit, Practical Dev, other public forums. And on a serious note, not, uh, not along the Battlestar Galactica lines, uh, we hang out in these places not to be creepy or to ferry company secrets back to our coworkers, but because the better we understand your pain and the problems that you're facing, the more equipped we are to help. But why do we care about this? What's our motivation? I'm gonna share a couple of those quotes that I mentioned earlier that I heard from the DevRel community. Anastasia says this, she says, we live for the moments when someone tells us that our work has helped them. Um, and when someone, someone tells me something from my blog or talk helped them, it honestly makes my day. And I completely resonate with this. I've had a wins folder for years that's traveled me from computer to computer that has screenshots of emails and tweets and DMs from community members who have sent me thank yous for the work that I or my team have accomplished. And on any day when I have a hard time and I'm struggling to remember, right, this is, this is why I'm doing this, I go back to that folder because that makes my entire day. It makes me remember why I'm passionate about it. It makes me remember that it's worth it. We also want to make your jobs easier, which means hearing all of your feedback, even when it does make our day more difficult. Ken McGrage says, we 100% want to make your lives easier, even if it means taking hard feedback to our organizations. Our job isn't to sell them anything. And Greg Bulmash says, most of us got into this because we genuinely like helping people and sharing in their aha moments. Every evangelist and advocate has a story of happily helping a dev with a product we no longer work for or never did. It's just who we are. And even having to take some of this hard feedback to our team or having to dig into a new code base and figure out something completely different than what we're used to so that we can help you out, it's worth it because we feel your pain. We understand the frustration that you're going through and we're just as frustrated when things don't work right because we want to do better by you. So all of this background information leads me to the core question that I've heard from so many technical folks. Why should I care about developer relations, right? Why does it matter to me? After all, on the outside, a lot of us look like folks who travel to a whole bunch of conferences and give talks and host parties and complain or humble brag about how hard it is to be on the road all the time, right? This meme went around Twitter a few years ago, and it's right in some cases. I've lost track of the number of flights that I've either fallen asleep on or at least tried to catch some sleep on. But it also shows a very, very narrow view of DevRel, which is a problem that I think we're somewhat to blame for ourselves and one that I'm working to fix along with a lot of other people. This tweet from John Kavanagh Johnson sums it up perfectly. He says, most devs undervalue the skills and commitment DevRel brings to the table. Change that by doing more talking with and less talking to. And while I recognize that there's some irony in my saying that at a webinar where I'm presenting, um, I'm hoping that all of this context will help you better understand the value that developer relations has, not for our companies, again, but for you, the technical audience that we're trying to serve. And I think it's worth noting that out of several dozen responses that I got from developer relations professionals when I asked this question, the what do you wish developers knew about your job, the only ones that mentioned anything about conferences and travel were statements like this. Dev advocates have technical skills. We don't just give talks. That someone else said, we are not talking heads. And lastly, traveling and shows can actually be grueling and brutal, not fun. Daniel Apaquest puts it well in this tweet. He said, DevRel is not just about talking to devs about some technology. It's also about participating in building and maintaining community and ecosystem. And I think part of the hard thing for folks who are in developer relations is that it's really easy to tweet about events that we're at. It's really easy to take pictures with the friends that we run into there and post those on Twitter. It's harder to know how to explain in 280 characters what it is we're doing on a daily basis to build and maintain these communities and ecosystems. So there's some folks that have taken to work out loud mode, um, which is just sharing what they're doing on a daily basis. And those tweets might not get as much attention, but it's giving a more holistic picture of what we're responsible for rather than just 
the, the traveling and on the road mentality. So if our jobs aren't made up solidly of travel and conferences and speaking, what is it that we do? And again, why should you care? So here's a small glimpse into what we do that directly impacts you. First up, we advocate on your behalf for product issues, features, and improvements. We take good, bad, and ugly feedback to the product, engineering, marketing, and sales teams to help them understand what you're actually looking for, not just what they think you're looking for, and the pain points that you're facing, as well as feedback about where we've screwed up along the way. We create content. We write blog posts. We make tools. We create sample applications to help you better understand what our product is and how you can use it to make your work life easier. Next up, we research and write about good practices in our particular niche of the tech industry, again, in hopes of helping and empowering you to do your best work. And lastly, and this one might seem interesting to you, we amplify your work, your code, your blog posts, your conference talks, anything that mentions our product or things in the industry, we amplify you and the content that you're producing, both internally to our coworkers, so they have a better understanding of what the community is up to, and externally to other community members as well. Also, we talk about you all the time. It's a little embarrassing sometimes because people, people get tired of hearing about it, but we love talking and we love talking about you. So why do we do all of these things? Because we value people first and technology second. And this may seem a little backward. After all, we work for tech companies, the success, again, of whose products pay our bills. But here's the thing. We all know that the best salespeople, the best marketing folks, the best people, the people that we most enjoy being around, prioritize people, right? And when we prioritize people over product, this is another reason that, that shows that developer relations is related to product and marketing and even sales, but isn't quite the same. And it takes us back to the mantra that we've talked about a couple times now. To the community, I represent the company. To the company, I represent the community. And I must have both of their interests in mind at all times. And again, this is the core of developer relations, because when we have both of these goals in mind, we're able to not only help the community by providing relevant content, we're also able to provide valuable feedback to the company, which in turn should help you as well. And this is a difficult balance to maintain, as I'm sure some of you can, can think or can know, um, but it's crucial for a successful DevRel team because we recognize that if we put the community first above our company and above the technology that we're working with, we help you, the community members, to succeed. But we also know that when the company makes a decision that sets the community up for failure, there's often no coming back from that mistake which of course impacts the company, which isn't great. But again, it also impacts you, the community members, because you all now have to find a new solution for whatever problem we are solving for you in the first place. So we've covered what, where, who, when, and why. All that's left is how. And this is where I'm gonna ask you all to do something for us today. You now hopefully understand the value of developer relations as it relates to you a little bit better. But how can you get involved as a developer or ops person? And how can you help us help you? There's a few key ways that I'll go over. And there's a passive version and an active version. First up, the passive version. First of all, be patient with us. We're advocating for you internally at our companies. And these conversations sometimes take a lot longer than we'd like them to. But trust me when I say that you are always on our minds and we want to find a solution for you as soon as possible. Next up, recognize we don't know everything, especially if we work for a big corporation like Microsoft or Amazon or any of the other Google or things like that that have big um, product departments and a lot of various products. And there may be times when we have to say, I don't know when you ask us a question, but that doesn't mean that we aren't technical or tech savvy or capable of helping you get to the bottom of your question it actually means that we want to build an authentic relationship with you. And in order to do that, we know that we can't lead you astray by guessing at answers or giving you incorrect information. So instead, we're choosing to be upfront and honest about our limitations and committing to work with you to find that answer. Lastly, know that you are our first priority and we are advocating for you each and every day internally at our company. You are absolutely the top thing that we are thinking about at all times, and we'll continue to fight for you, even when it makes our jobs difficult. Next up, the active version. How can you help? Give us honest, authentic, genuine feedback, all of it. 
even if it's not the best news about the product or the company or even the people that we work for and with. We can only do better with your help. Secondly, tell us what you need. What would help you thrive in your professional life? And even if it's not directly related to our product or our company, chances are we know of a tool that might be beneficial for you or we might be able to introduce you to someone else who can help you more directly. Lastly, involve us in interesting conversations you're having in your communities. We love to hear about new tools and new concepts just as much as pain points and issues that you're having with our product. And all of this information helps us understand you better and allows us to be more effective at our job, helping and empowering you. So in summary, what is developer relations? It's a group of developer advocates, technical community managers, technical ambassadors, documentation writers, trainers, and more. All of us who exist to empower you to do your best work. Why do we do this? We do this because we care about our communities and we put people first, knowing that when we do so, the community as well as the company will succeed. And again, how can you help? Keep talking to us. Provide us with feedback about our own products. Loop us into conversations and let us know what you need. I'd be remiss if I didn't call out all of the awesome people uh, who contributed to these conversations that I had over the last few months on Twitter and Dev.2, as well as in the DevRel communities that I'm a part of. All the names on this screen is an illustration of just one reason why I love this community. Everyone's invested in helping each other and doesn't think twice about offering advice or answering questions or simply amplifying someone else's work. And with that, thanks so much for having me here today. I've got my details for contacting me up on the screen. My DMs on Twitter are open, and I'm always happy to get emails from folks as well. Um, that's my book that's on the screen there. Hit me up if you're interested in um, asking any further questions about it. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, apress.com, pretty much anywhere online. And as always, I love chatting about this topic and helping companies figure out how to build a successful and thriving technical community. Um, I think we've got some questions, um, but as I mentioned, I'm always more than happy to continue the conversation offline as well. Thanks again for having me. Thanks for watching. 